Hello. Welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja. And today I'll be briefly talking about the recent Orath March or Women's March in Pakistan on International Women's Day. And the reason I'm broaching this subject is because in my Facebook feed as well as on WhatsApp groups, I've been hearing a lot of things, mostly from men, about how they either disagree with it or find it to be troubling. And I've been trying to tease out uh, what is all that about. Now, to me, women coming together and walking through Pakistani streets together, along with men who are in solidarity with them, is a huge step and a wonderful thing. And the reason that's a huge step and a wonderful thing is because this is women at least once in a year coming together and claiming the public sphere for themselves. Claiming it in a sense that they should be able to walk through it from one place to another, regardless of how they're dressed or how they look, without worrying about men glaring at them, men accosting them, men you know, openly or surreptitiously making judgment on them, okay? And at the core of that is this idea that inherently deep down, regardless of our gender or our sex, we are, as human beings, inherently equal. And that if we live in an Islamic society, if you have read your Mulana Mumtaz Ali or Fatima Marnisi or all the other scholars that our mullahs do not quote, it should not really matter how a woman is dressed in the public sphere, not at home. Because if there is rule of law and if it is a truly Islamic society, it shouldn't really matter. The victim should not be blamed for what others do to her through their gaze or through their voices or whatever. So the reason I was and am always will be in support of any such ventures is because to me, the freedom of movement within the public sphere without fear of repercussions is crucial for women in all societies and especially in Muslim societies. Think of it this way, like I think of my nieces, right? I would want them to live in a Pakistan where they can go to their college, they can go to their jobs without them worrying about whether that journey is going to be precarious or not, and without their parents worrying about it. Why cannot we create a public sphere in which that is possible? So all these men who are opposed to it, what is their solution that women should stay at home Right, And then if they are in the public sphere, sphere uh, they are game, right? That they can say or do. I mean, that's one of the mentalities that is at work here. I have students from uh, KPK who tell me that when they travel in the buses and if someone accosts them, the argument is if you were good women, you would be at home, right? And that is an extremely masculine way of looking at the female body and the female subjectivity. So was I in support of this march? Yes, absolutely. There were people, even women, claiming that somehow this march is orchestrated from the West and safeguards the Western interests. I don't see that connection. And even if they took their ideas from the West, what's wrong with that? What is wrong with picking up an idea wherever it exists and if it makes someone's life better? more secure? Do we care where that idea came from? When you go to your doctor, do you ask them, give me only, you know, Eastern-made medicines? When your armed forces take pride in their weapon systems, where do they come from? All the technologies of destruction produced in the West are easily adopted in our cultures. All the technologies of distraction, phones, right? television, radio, all these things, internet, you all use that, men use that. None of them worries about whether it's Western or Eastern, but it's only when we adopt liberating ideas from the West, make them our own, right? 
make them into our own ideas, transform them, and then use them to mobilize a certain politics of equality that these men, these insecure men, have a problem with Western ideas, right? So, you know, I think it's a good thing that people are calling on this open misogyny of our culture, that women have come together and are saying no, not just to extreme cases of violence, but cases of epistemic violence, systemic violence, violence through the gaze, right? So that they can walk the streets of their own nation freely as independent, autonomous human subjects. That's what is at stake. So this is not the time, this is not an event where if you are for justice, if you're for equality, right, where you stand on the sidelines, where you invent reasons for not supporting it, right, where you have all these caveats as if if the Women's March met some of your conditions, you will support it. Now, the core question is the right of women to enter the public sphere without fear, without being accosted by men and with fair degree of protection in law, but also in culture. Now, if we can create that, if this truly is an Islamic society, then a woman should be able to walk, and I'm quoting Walana Mumtaz Ali here, from point A to point B without fear of any kind of epistemic or physical violence. Now, if you can do that, all these men who were throwing stones at women, I mean, how brave is that, right? Throwing stones at unarmed women and their male allies, right? That's really, really brave, right? So if you can do that, if you can create a society in which that is possible, in which we can have equality, in which women don't feel intimidated anywhere, domestic, or the public sphere, all power to you, right? But don't try to convince people like me and others that these are Western ideas and our ideas somehow inscribe women in the private sphere and they should never come out of there. That argument is not going to work. If you are going to go to Islamic interpretations of it, I have certain really enlightened interpretations that I can share with you. You should go and read them and find out for yourself. But this fear of that it will create shamelessness and all that, these are all men's insecurities expressed by men and then women who align themselves with them. Women who otherwise probably consider themselves independent at all. When you are speaking in the vocabularies of masculinity, of patriarchy, and hurting other women with your words and actions, you're part of the patriarchy. So, on this day, even though I could not be there, I was there with all of you in spirit and my words, my writing, and whatever I have to offer will always be in solidarity with all those women who are fighting for their rights, especially women in Pakistan. And I will ta always take a stand with you, no matter what. Thank you so much to the organizers of this march. Thank you so much to all of you who imperiled yourself, got out of your homes, and walked in the streets despite the threats, despite the violence to you. You are the future of Pakistan and many other Muslim countries. And our hopes are with you. And whatever little people like me can do to support you, to stand in solidarity with you, we will do that. With that, thank you so much. And as always, peace and love.